Well, for more on how the auto industry is coping with COVID-19, let's bring in Mark Phelan. He's an auto critic and columnist for the Detroit Free Press. He's also a member of the North American Car of the Year Award Jury. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So as we saw with the big three U.S. automakers temporarily shutting down, you also have BMW, Honda and Toyota doing the same in the U.K. What sort of footing is the global auto industry on right now? Uh, well, it, it, it's in panic mode, really. Uh, like the rest of the world, nobody knows how long this will last or where the bottom is. Uh, thus far, we've got uh, all uh, assembly plants by the American automakers, the Japanese and Korean automakers here in North America have shut down uh, and uh, for at least two weeks. And I don't think any of us would be surprised if it lasts longer than that. And we did see the same sorts of shutdowns during the 2008 financial crisis. But what are the similarities and the differences with this coronavirus? Uh, well, it's very different in, in that people were, were still, you know, going about their normal lives, you know, except that, you know, there, there was no credit available at that time. You know, now people are, are, you know, shut down, unable to go about their normal life. The state of Michigan, where I live, has closed all restaurants and bars to everything except carry-out business for at least the next two weeks. So if you go out at night, you know, really you have the streets to yourself. Uh, that cuts down on everything. People are afraid to go shopping. Uh, people are, are really just, you know, huddling up uh, and hoping that uh, there's good news in a couple of weeks. And obviously we're also seeing a lot of losses. I mean, what sort of losses could those employed by the auto industry and its supply chain be looking at? Oh, it, it, it could be massive. Uh, the, the people who work for the automakers themselves have all got, uh, for the American automakers at least, have all got union contracts. So they will be insulated uh, from uh, the uh, total loss of, of income. Some of the Japanese companies are also paying their people while they're shut down. But no company can afford to do that if it turns into a long shutdown. Uh, the, if this goes into you know multiple weeks and months of all of the factories being closed, there's, there's really no telling what the impact on industry individuals are. People, you know, would uh, be in danger of losing their houses. You know, people would not have health care. The, the impact could be devastating. Now, is the auto industry any better positioned to navigate this crisis than other industries, say, like the airlines? Uh, well, we're, it's less dependent on, tra on, tr on, on pleasure travel th than the airlines. Uh, so uh, they, they're probably the ones uh, on the thinnest ice right now. Uh, what the, the big question for the automaker, automakers is, will people be making money? I, if people are confident of their income, I, I think uh, that should you know, prevent sales from absolutely cratering. We know that a lot of uh, companies are pivoting towards electric vehicles. Now, given the electric vehicle market's dependence on global sourcing for its core technology, i.e. the batteries, as well as some of these lower gas prices because of the OPEC oil standoff, how might the electric vehicle sector be affected? Uh, that's a fascinating question. Uh, the whole supply chain is going to be reconsidered, I think. Uh, the the you know, American plants that rely very heavily on Chinese uh, suppliers all had a, a two-month uh, supply, essentially, of parts. So none of them have suffered yet. But you know, they, they would if, if the uh, shutdown went any longer. And the question about battery supply will be the same, particularly the raw materials of, of batteries. You know, where do they come from? If, if they are all in one area, what if that area was devastated by disease or, or natural disaster? So companies are, are they, all of these companies are pretty good at having plans A, B, and C. Uh, but uh, I think they'll be putting a lot more effort into making sure that those are robust plans in the future. And do we know how the, the oil um, standoff between OPEC and, and OPEC plus countries might also dampen perhaps interest in EV, EV vehicles? You know, honestly, I, th I think at, that po at this point, for the first time in my life, what happens with oil <laughs> prices is the farthest thing from the top of anybody's mind. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, gas prices were not high enough in the United States for them to be a significant reason to buy an electric vehicle anyway, even before the price war began. So I, I think that's almost a sideshow at the moment. And what about reliance on automation? Will unexpected events like the coronavirus push that more to the forefront in order to really limit disruption? 
It's an excellent question. In in the past, you know, manufacturers have found that there's a, a, a fine balance to be struck between automation and the flexibility that having humans in the plant uh, gives you. Uh, but uh, if, if it turns out that uh, you can't have humans in the plant for a, a protracted period, they'd have to reconsider how their plants are laid out and, in fact, how they design their vehicles because the flexibility allows them to make a wide variety of vehicles, offer a wide variety of, of features. If you were having everything assembled uh, more by by machines, you might have to dial back on, on the choices that you gave to people. Well, thank you for your insights. Mark Thielen there, auto critic and columnist for the Detroit Free Press and a member of the North American Car of the Year Award jury. All right, still ahead on the program, women and the coronavirus. They've